Hi, Hi everyone. everyone! Well, Laura, who do we have today? Today we'll be interviewing John Warren. He's the founder of San Sebastian Food, which is mainly a cooking school which welcomes many foreigners willing to spend a whole morning in the kitchen. During the interview, he will talk about how everything began. And he will also mention the wide range of possibilities they offer. Here we have John Warren. Shop. And we've got products from uh, this regional, we got a lot of stuff from Spain, mm -hmm. but um, some stuff from this bus region as well. I wasn't looking for this job to be honest with you, but I knew John from before. We have some friends in common, so I used to work in a restaurant in downtown with Lourdes. She's another colleague, she's not here now. And uh, Lourdes told me that John was looking for a male guy because when I was when I started working with them, it was all girls. Oh, nice. He was with seven girls, and then uh, I started working, so I was the first uh, boy yeah. in the company. So he was looking for somebody Basque who was able to speak Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. well. So uh, I started doing some tours. I liked the job. I wasn't quite sure at the beginning, mm. doing tours and all that. But then I, I find out there was you know, kind of an interesting, mm. interesting job. So so far so good. You know, and I love cooking as well. I'm not a professional chef, but I can cook. So I help uh, vendor a lot, and you know, I've been always working in the, in the same What is your industry. best dish? What My best dish, yes. uh, dish uh, fideo negra. <laughs> which is a Catalan paella, yeah. but instead yeah. of rice, they use noodles and squid ink. Yeah. Uh, cuttlefish, sepia, mm -hmm. and then some alioli with some sweet peas. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna come over to my house and make a nice pie for you? Guys, you want to. <laughs> Hello, John. What made you decide to change careers and set up your own business from scratch? Good question. Um, yeah, I guess ultimately I wasn't happy with the mm. career I was in. I was working in finance and. I just couldn't imagine doing that that same job for another 30 years. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to do my own business. Yeah. And I wanted to uh, to do something I was really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And how did you manage to start San Sebastian Food as it is now? How did I manage to start it? Yeah. What the whole story, or yeah. just I mean, well, basically, in short, um, I moved over here from Spain. Obviously, mm -hmm. left from England, rather left my job in London. And I did an eight week Spanish course to start with to give myself a basic because I didn't really speak any Spanish before. Mm -hmm. and, and then my best bit of luck was getting a job in the hotel called Villa Soro oh. on Calle Atagurieta. Yeah, yes. like that. And that really was where I got the inspiration to start San Sebastian Food because I was uh, contacting with all of the guests in the hotel every day you know, and they were able to tell me what they were here for. Mm -hmm. I had the idea to do something in tourism, but seeing them ask me about the food and wine, that was really the reason they were coming here, and yet they didn't really know the best places to go, so that was really the kind of got me thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of people coming here, they love the food and wine, and as soon as I told them some of my kind of favorite places, you know, even though I'm not a local, I have the kind of eyes of a local mm -hmm. and the eyes of a foreigner, so I was able to be kind of in the middle and give them access, you know, to what was here already, obviously, like amazing food and wine, but sorry, make it easier, make it a kind of uh, a channel. And I think, um, yeah, so through the hotel, that gave me the idea, and then slowly, slowly, I just built it up from there. And um, what was the biggest challenge? Oh, the biggest challenge, I would say, um, was the whole kind of paperwork process of setting up a business that isn't a kind of there wasn't exist really many businesses like this before. So it wasn't like you could say to someone, oh, well, this is what it is, you know, I'm opening a pharmacy and these are the, what it, this is what I'm gonna need and this is what yes. we're gonna do. You know, it was like, oh, well, it's a tour company, but it's not, you know, we're, we're doing 
these tours and a lot of different events, it was it was kind of complicated to to kind of build the structure of it. I guess that was probably the hardest thing. And then to do that all in Spanish with you know with very limited Spanish and yeah, that was probably the hardest thing. And um, why did you decide to open your cooking school here and not in another city or country? Well, I mean, I guess really I was here anyway. I mean, this for me is this city's got the best ingredients, you know, anywhere in Europe for sure. <laughs> And you know, a unique place. I mean, the culture here is like incredibly preserved. The whole food culture, I mean, the whole mission of directions. I mean, yeah, there's a million reasons to not think about anywhere else. Although that's not to say in the future that we're not keen to look at other opportunities. Yes. Mm -hmm. And have you ever been a student in your own school? Ah, good question. Yeah, um, not as much as I'd like. Yes, is, is the answer. I mean, a couple of times I have done a little, a few classes, okay. but. Um, I love you know Ben Lok cooking now. I kind of love uh, seeing him cook, and I actually think it's something really important that not just me but all of our team should do more classes. You know, we're in the office, let's take the bookings, all the reservations, and I think uh, you know even though she knows what the class is, to do it makes a big difference. And she has actually done a couple. Mm -hmm. so. And we've read that you offer many activities such as tours and cooking lessons. What do cooking classes involve? Well, the, yeah, the typical cooking class, um, they meet here at 10.30 in the morning and then they go to the Brecha market just here, yes. just a couple of hundred meters, where they'll go and actually buy the ingredients for the class, not all of them, but you know, mm. some of the ingredients, especially the fish, and then they come back here, so that's about 45 minutes, so they're here at 11.15, and they go into that room over there, have a coffee, um, our guide explains the class, then the head chef comes in, mm. introduces himself, and then that's 15 minutes, so 11.30, they come in here, to the main cooking area and they hands on cooking for two hours until 1.30 mm -hmm. and then they have lunch here on this table uh, for a couple of hours or an hour and a half and then they leave so it's a half day class hands on cooking with lunch included. Oh, and are basic cooking skills essential in order to take part in cooking classes or can a total beginning beginner attend them? No, it's, it's something probably that we're um, not struggling with, but it's something that comes up now and again. I mean, the class in theory is open to anyone, yeah. and we try and have this kind of medium level of, yeah. of proficiency. But you know, sometimes we get it wrong. You know, someone's oh, it wasn't hard enough. You know, no one probably says it's too hard. So you know, we're in that balance. But basically, it's open to anyone. And you know, a lot of the classes at the end of the day, they're meant to be fun and interactive and. Although we want people to learn stuff and you know to cook, which they do 100%, um, I think it's you know we're not trying to push them and to really yeah. challenge them too much. At the end of the day, they're on holiday. Most yeah. of our clients and and they love food, um, and we don't want them to feel too much like yeah. they're back at school. And uh, have you ever had any accidents or disasters in the cooking school? Well. We've only really been open since April, mm. so nothing crazy. Although the other day the, the TV did fall down off the oh. wall, but luckily no one was under it, and it was a, a technician was looking at it. So that's probably the worst thing. Um, but I'm sure lots more things to come. And when it comes to your gourmet shop, gourmet shop, if you were to choose five products of it, which ones would you choose? Which five products yeah, would I choose from the shop? Five. Well, I'd probably highlight you know, um, some of our best-selling products, which would be the caviar only, mm -hmm. which are these little encapsulated balls of olive oil. Yeah. You know them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have various different flavors. They sell really well mm -hmm. and really popular. You know, <coughs> you learn a lot when you open the shop. We never had any retail experience before. And, you know, it's, it's surprising sometimes what sells. We've learned a huge amount, and that's one of our top sellers. It's... Um, you know, perfect as a gift, it's a nice size, it's something different, you know, innovative, people like that. Number two, I'd say, are the salts, like Basque salt, mm. I don't know if you yeah. know, yeah. famous for salt here, and um, Malden salt, until now, is <coughs> most of our clients have heard of, but when we talk about Basque salt, you know, it's, it's a nice story to tell, you know, people are looking for something from here, so it's, and it's less and light, so you've got to think people are on holiday, they're traveling in suitcases, and again, it makes a nice gift. And then, I mean, our range of olive oils are fantastic. Some of the best olive oils, and people already have in their heads, you know, Spain olive oil. So, you know, that's kind of, you're almost halfway there to selling mm -hmm. it. 
and then, I mean, our wine selections made by Tito is really fantastic. We've got mm -hmm. a real wide variety of wines as well as wines that are very well known. So, and something from the wine department, maybe a red wine from Ribera del Duero or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, everyone's heard of Rioja, but it's a new region. And for most people, it's been around for a long time, but it's an up and coming region internationally. And then ultimately, I'd probably pick something that is one of our own brand products because that's yeah. something we really want to grow now. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting. In fact, you know, we're, we're thinking about launching a series of our own branded products. So that's you know our own packaging, yeah. our own kind of story. And I'd probably choose this kind of red pepper jam, which is really nice. That's made by Jaime, a local farmer, just from mm -hmm. Italia, um, 30 minutes along the yeah. coast. And it's a slow food product. It's really delicious. <laughs> cheese, pate. So we went top five. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, what what kind of food do you cook for your brand? Well, we don't make any of them ourselves because you have to have a very strict license mm. to be able to make the produce yourself. And which we would do, I mean, we would happily do it here. Yeah. But unfortunately, to have a license to make, you know, jams and things like that, anything that mm. you sell, you have to actually be in a, a like an industrial area, polygonal, you know. You yes, yes. Because we're in the city centre, we couldn't, so we'd have to get a locale out in, you know, Astigarraga or somewhere. Yeah invest in a whole new kitchen, I mean, that's crazy. So what we do is we use a supplier, Jaime, for example, who makes the product anyway, and then we put our brand on it. Um. Which, you know, in reality, is it's the easiest way to go, you know, until, until way into the future. But, um, so yeah, but other than the, the red pepper jam, um, we've got other jams and, you know, looking at other opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.